The text taken from Mark, the seventh chapter, verses 24 through 30. I have to read this one verse again. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. I want you to keep that in your mind as I offer up and offer to you God's word for us today. From crumbs to feast, from crumbs to feast. Do you ever feel that life is serving you up crumbs? Do you ever feel like that? Crumbs those tiny pieces that remain from food droppings, not even the scraps, but crumbs. We even give our dog scraps under the table, don't we? But not crumbs. Crumbs are depressing if we are hungry, and surely we don't want crumbs or any resemblance of something that appears to be like crumbs in our lifetime. Crumbs. The first part of Mark deals with the Pharisees challenging Jesus about tradition. Our sermon text, Mark 7, 24 through 30, focuses on faith, healing, in the context of tradition and certain races not interacting. Listen again. The text deals with faith, it deals with healing, and it deals in the context of tradition back in antiquity that certain races should not interact. Here's a brief overview regarding the beginning of the chapter. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, sent their representatives to check up on Jesus' teachings regarding Jewish customs. They questioned Jesus about his disciples having dirty hands since they didn't wash prior to eating. You see, Jewish tradition stipulated that devout Jews must wash their hands and arms in a certain way, truly a ceremonial act. The Pharisees understood this ceremony to cleanse them from anything that they deemed, they optimum word, they deemed unclean. Jesus scolded them and used the Isaiah 29, 13 text that focuses on people being hypocrites. Do we know any hypocrites in life? Do we know any hypocrites? Meaning the Pharisees honored God with their lips in following Jewish laws and traditions, but they didn't follow God's commandment to love one's neighbor as they love themselves. So you see, the Pharisees didn't treat others as God has commanded. They were always finding fault with others who didn't live up to their standards and expectations. Again, do we know anyone like that? Do we ever act like that? Jesus said, Juan, you pay more attention to reputation than character. You carefully follow certain religious practices while allowing your hearts to remain distant from God. That's being dirty. You emphasize your virtues, but others' sins. Again, do we know folks like that? 
Now we go on to our text, verses 24, the verses 24 through 30. Jesus moves on from the Pharisees and goes to a home in Tyre, a city on the coastline that was considered a region that was filthy due to the Gentiles and their customs. A Gentile was anyone other than a Jew. Many Greeks lived there and worshipped false gods, and they delved in deviant behaviors. However, Jesus is there to preach and teach in a place to believe to be so sinful that the most devout Jew just should not go there, especially the rabbi, the teacher, as Jesus. You see, the Pharisees would not have been caught dead there. But Jesus went there to minister, but on his own terms. This text stipulates that he doesn't want anyone to know that he's there at first. Why? Maybe Jesus was just plain tired. He admonished the Pharisees in Galilee, and Tyre was 30 miles away. So if they walked that, if they hooked that, hoofed that, Jesus was a little tired. He didn't want anyone to know, maybe, this is my theory, that he was in town until he had rested. We keep forgetting that Jesus was human. Don't we get tired? Okay, you're not interacting with me today. Okay, let me put a little story in this. Last night, I got in at after 9 o'clock. You all are diligent in telling me to stop throwing Nelson Ross under the bus. <laughs> However, after being in a conference all week long and and uplifting God and First Baptist Church. Call him for him to come downstairs to get the bags out of the car. He did it lovingly. But then, when I put one foot out of the car, what are we going to eat? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what your pastor said. Something like, I don't give a care what we eat. I was tired. I needed to rest. I didn't need anyone pulling at me soon as I put one foot after driving four hours from Portland, Maine, a place I had never driven before. But thank you, God, you brought me there safely. You brought me back home. I needed to rest. Jesus was human. It couldn't have been because he believed the people weren't worthy because Jesus chose to go there and to minister. But whatever Jesus' reasons, his terms were not adhered to by a Seraphonician woman who pushed her way into the home in which he was staying. She was seeking healing on behalf of her sick child. Mm. And mothers, I wasn't blessed to be a mother, but I know mothers would do anything for their sick child. Am I right about that, mothers? Anything. You'll move hell. You'll move heaven for your sick child. So this Gentile woman approached Jesus and argues with him. She literally goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus, the rabbi, regarding the matter and her child. 
For you see, she had heard of a man who performed miracles. Good news travels fast. Jesus' powerful ministry made it impossible for his presence to remain a secret wherever he went. The woman pleads with Jesus to heal her child, and Jesus tells her, children must eat first, and it's not right to toss bread to the dogs. Now, there are various opinions about this text as to whether Jesus was referring to the woman as a dog in the context that he, Jesus, had come to only help Israel and that she, this woman, along with any other Gentile, remember I said a Gentile was anyone other than a Jew, had no right to him. Or was it because she barges into the home uninvited? Remember, Jesus is tired. Remember when I put one foot out of that car last night? And Nelson Ross asked me, what are we going to eat? And I had some choice words. Maybe Jesus had some choice words. Those were Jesus' choice words. Or maybe because she's a woman, but whatever the case, this unnamed woman is bold in her response to Jesus. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Even the dogs underneath the table. Let's look at the importance of this Mark and text and what it teaches. First, the text teaches through that of Jesus that traditions and customs are not important if it hinders Christ like behaviors. I'll tell you that again. It teaches that traditions and customs are not important if it hinders Christ-like behaviors. Jesus chastised the Pharisees regarding traditions, those traditions such as hand-washing, looking down on people, being judgmental. Second point, the text shows us that life sometimes tests us. And sometimes the test will be harsh and the test will be painful. Jesus challenged the Seraphonician woman. However, she fought for her child. She fought to be recognized as being human, just as important as the Jewish culture. Let me tell you what Jesus, I believe Jesus was doing during this time. Remember, Jesus was a human, and Jesus was divine also. But Jesus was teaching. Jesus came down to forgive us for our sins, but Jesus also came down to show us how to live and to go through some of the things that we would go through. Therefore, he thought this was an opportune time to teach the Pharisees and to teach the Seraphonician woman. Jesus was testing, teaching, and challenging the woman to seek the feast standing in front of her. Jesus was the feast. Jesus was the feast. The text shows us that we are assured victory since Jesus shows no partiality. Now you're going to put me on trial. You're going to say, well, Pastor Sheila, I have prayed and prayed and prayed, and my prayer 
has not been answered like that as a Seraphonician woman. I'm not God. I can tell you and interpret what is stated in thus says the Lord. But optimally, our sovereign God is in charge of everything. God dictates the healing. God dictates the how. And as I always say, God has the last say-so. So as long as we have breath in our bodies, we should pray, trust, and believe. But Jesus was challenging that Seraphonician woman. What Jesus has done for others, he'll do for us today. Jesus commended the woman for her answer. She was a little flippant with Jesus, don't you think? She went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And that's why when people question, do you talk to God like that? I'm always reverent, reverent. I'm always respectful. But God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we are in relationship together. So when I go like that, but Jesus, I prayed, I prayed, I believed, I trusted. And sometimes I do duck because I get kind of um, scared that Jesus is going to knock the heck out of me. However, when you are in true relationship with the Savior, don't you talk to your significant others in conversation? Don't you talk to your children and your friends that I'm in relationship? And although this Seraphonician woman had not been in relationship with Jesus, she wasn't going to let him go because she had heard about the miracles and she was going to hold on until Jesus healed her child. So Jesus commended her and told her, your child is healed. If we have faith and trust, that this idea of life handing us crumbs can be stumped upon however Jesus wants to stump upon it. It can happen. And the reason it can happen, because Jesus has set the table for the feast with him. That table right there reminds us of the victory that we have in Jesus. This communion table, this Lord's Supper table, reminds us that Jesus has promised to be with us and not forsake us. Jesus' death and Christ's resurrection made the feast possible for all who will accept and believe it's no crumbs there it's no crumbs there it's no crumbs why because Jesus refused to give us crumbs we don't have to accept crumbs Jesus has prepared us the feast of feast the feast of feast there will be challenges and even disappointments in life and sometimes if no one has given you permission, I'm giving you, giving you permission. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus. Tell Jesus your needs. Tell Jesus, look, I'm waiting upon you. I'm depending upon you. Give me peace. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus. Because of the love, because Jesus loves all of us, it will be okay. Because I love what the song, the hymn writer says, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to the old Lamb of God. I come, in the verse I love, just as I am, and waiting not 
to rid my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. You don't have to take crumbs. You don't have to take crumbs. Don't let anyone tell you you have to take crumbs. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice that we don't have to take crumbs. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to join First Baptist Church. We invite you to come and be baptized. Or we invite you to come with a letter of transfer. Or we invite you to come with Christian experience. But you need to come knowing we have the feast of feast through that of Jesus the risen Christ, the risen Christ. Hmm. We invite you to come at this time if you would love to come. Or meet us, the diaconate through that of Marcia Scase in the chapel, and we will take your information. But Jesus, and First Baptist, we invite you. We're waiting for you. And we love you. Amen.